I'm coming as fast as I can. Wait to the people! Hey, everybody, I'm Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Duran. You sure you're not Bullwinkle? Well, in part one, I was Bullwinkle, <laughs> and June did her Rocky the Squ- How cool was that? You never know what's going to happen in part two, so let's go there now. In 2000, you got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I did. Which is so well-deserved, and we're actually, I want to tell people where it is. It is, um... She drove by it. <laughs> it's 7080 Hollywood Boulevard on the south side of the street, just east of La Brea, is that correct? 7080. Woo! I mean, wow. I should put a sign up on it. <laughs> yes, say, you should. Don't should. tread on me. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I would have maps. Here's a map to my star on Hollywood. We'll get you another necklace that has the address of your star on it, too. No, that's great. Um, so when you're on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, everyone will Check get that it. out. So what was it like, the ceremony? What, what it was that like for you to, to be a part of that? You know, Steve Allen, who was my dear friend mm-hmm. with whom I worked, Steve was my MC, and we drove in the limo together down mm-hmm. to Hollywood Boulevard. It was jammed, and Steve looked at him and said, you know, I've been to about 30 of these. He said, I've never seen a crowd like this. Everybody came, yeah. directors whom I knew, uh, stars, animators, writers, it, it was incredible. And finally, after about an hour, one of the officers came by <laughs> and he grabbed my arm and he said, Lady, get back in your limo. We've got to open Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> we have to open Hollywood <laughs> Boulevard. It was just jam. <laughs> oh, relax. Let her have her. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, I'm, I'm so happy. I mean, I think I... Speak for everyone when it's. I say it's very well deserved. Absolutely, and 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 what an accomplishment! I mean, I've always wanted a star, <laughs> and I don't think anybody's ever going to give me one. So June, why not? Because I'm not as good as you, June. Well, I can I only can't do, play the guitar either. Uh, this is true. I might get one for that for rock and roll. <laughs> Woo hoo! Um, so let me ask you something. You obviously you've been in the business for a very long time. You've seen some many many changes. Um, uh, uh, since the since the the early days, what changes in the voiceover business do you feel have been really great that you like, and what changes maybe do you not like so much? In the first place, the animation is altogether different. Mm-hmm. You have Rocky the Flying Squirrel looked like a squirrel. Yeah. Granny looked like a human being. Mm-hmm. Not anymore. The the designs of the characters are altogether different. Yeah. They're not like the classic days. Mm-hmm. And not only that, the animation is, a lot of it is CGI. Mm-hmm. But the voices are shrieking and hollering. Mm. They aren't the way they used to be. When Mel did a voice, or Dawes, Butler, mm-hmm. or any of the others who worked in uh, the Flintstones, they were people, whether they were animals or whatever. Right. They sounded real. Right. But not anymore. So things are different from classic days. Mm-hmm. And when you were first starting out in animation, you were all in the room together, yes? You were yes. all recording together. And now it's it's very much you come in and do... Many you do times. One line yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you it come was in separately. It's an ensemble cast mm-hmm. at first. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, June, let us know. Tell us all what does June Foray like to do when she's just relaxing and not working? What do you do for fun? I do a lot of reading. I meet friends mm-hmm. who are in the same business. Yeah. I go to the theater, I play with my dog. <laughs> yes. I love animals. Sweet dog, yeah. And um, I don't know, I'm always busy. And then, of course, I was on the Board of Governors for 26 years of the Motion Picture Academy, mm-hmm. so they're always having screenings. Yeah. And I go to the uh, student screenings, uh, the animation screenings, the shorts, and um, so. I'm busy all yeah. the time, whether I'm working or not. Yeah, 
She stays busy. I love it. Yeah. And I'm admiring, hold on. Yes. Before you ask you another question, I'm admiring your awesome watch. I know. Oh, Chuck I've got Because three. look at that. I like giant watches too. Look, can everybody <laughs> oh, look see this? look at that. Oh, that's gorgeous. And I love stars. I know. Look at my rings. They're all stars. So that's you and I are like, we're like, we're like <laughs> jewelry buddies here. This is awesome. You guys could do a lot. We're having, June and I are well, having no, a rock and roll moment. And June and I were talking about, she, we have the same size foot, five, five and a half, so we've been admiring shoes. And so <laughs> we could do a whole home shopping network <laughs> thing here with jewelry Good and idea. shoes. We digress. Um, okay. But, okay, so I wanted to ask you about, you also did the Chatty Kathy doll voice. Yes, I did. I did Chatty Kathy. And she was very sweet. You pull the string, mm -hmm. and she'd say, I love you. Please change my dress. You know, wonderful, sweet little things. So one day, my agent called and said, uh, "You're doing." I did a lot of ADR work mm -hmm. all the time, and uh, he said, "You're going to have to work at MGM on the Twilight Zone." And I thought, "Oh boy, I have to audition." No, they want you there. So when I got there, they gave me the script of Talkie Tina, the doll <laughs> who kills. The mean husband. Yes. <laughs> the, the the daughter and the wife, they never heard her speak. And uh, so she'd be alone with Kelly Savalas yes, who played the mean yes. husband. And she'd say, my name is Taki Tina, and I'm going to kill you. Oh, I <laughs> you know. know. She <laughs> sounds like, like Chatty Cathy. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, that was, that was, uh. <laughs> Chatty Kathy on a bad day. Yeah, and she finally does. <laughs> mm -hmm. But then the wife picks her up. I love the last line. The wife picks her up, and and Talkie Tina looks at her, and she says, My name is Talkie Tina, and you better be nice to me. It's, it's so Some eerie. people say wow. it's their, their favorite episode. It is. It's so good. Yeah. It's so scary. I it's so creepy. I have to admit that I oh, have watched yes. that. Yes. Yes. Many times. I love it. What are some of, I mean, you've worked with Mel Blanc, Bill Scott, William Conrad, Edward Everett Horton. What are some of your, do you have like a special memory, whether you were in session together, of working with any of those guys? Edward Everett Horton was terrific. He never drove, but uh, one day, it was kind of cold in the winter time, even in California, mm -hmm. and he came in and he had a huge huge woven sweater. And I said, Edward Everett, that's a gorgeous sweater. He said, my high school sweater. And he was <laughs> what, 90 years old? <laughs> but he still had a high school that's sweater. So oh, cute. that is cute. That's some good quality sweater right there. Hey man, yeah. they, they don't make them yeah. like they used to, I'm telling you. But well, working with all of these people was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Bill Conrad, Don's Butler, Bill Scott. Mel Blanc. Oh my God, I did about yeah. 40 shorts out at Warner Brothers with him. The first one I did was Broomstick Bunny. Broomstick Bunny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Played with Hazel. Yeah. And what was it Along like? Witch Hazel with the flying hairpins and she was so... Well, they remember that Witch Hazel more than the Disney one. Yeah. Really? And yeah. Disney was very angry I that imagine. I did Witch Hazel at work. It wasn't my fault. No. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. She's like, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> you know. You got you to gotta go where the work is, right? Absolutely. Yeah. When you were growing up, was there anybody else in animation that you used to listen to and go like, oh, wow, that's amazing? or Not particularly. No? Because June was the best. Yeah. I never thought that I would do voices for animation. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be an actor, and that was it. I yeah. never thought of animation until I got my work at Disney. And then Tex Avery called and Chuck Jones. I got a Tex Avery Life Achievement Award because I did Red Hot Riding Hood. And, Red Hot uh, Riding Hood. Yeah, and the statue is about this high. Wow. Weighs 25 pounds. I couldn't lift it myself. <laughs> but I got the Tex Avery Award mm -hmm. last year too. Wow. So it's That's pretty nice, cool. Yeah. That's very cool. Can you have you ever thought about what else you would have done with your life as a career if you didn't If I didn't be an actor? Mm -hmm. 
I think I would have been an archaeologist. An archaeologist? I, oh, I, I love, I have so many books. Mm -hmm. And the first time I went to Egypt, I was so thrilled going wow. into the pyramids yeah. and uh, being as short as I am. <laughs> I still had to stoop to get wow. into the hallway to get to the, the tomb yeah. mm -hmm. in the pyramid. Mm -hmm. And in one of the books I've written, uh, Honesty is the Best Policy, my book is uh, Perverse, Adverse, and Rotten Verse. And uh, I said <laughs> that when I went to Egypt, if the, under Honesty is the Best Policy, if the pharaohs had told the peasants who built the pyramids that they were going to kill them later, they would have hired camels and clippity-clopped over to Mesopotamia. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's true. Oh, my that's goodness. True. I love it. Um, here's, a, here's a question for you. Um, obviously, you really don't need to be working anymore. I mean, you could be enjoying, you know, going to the pyramids and enjoying yourself all over the world. What What do you think still drives you to keep working in, in, in animation? It's not the money. It's just doing what I love to do mm. and what I've done all my life and all the people that I work with. Mm -hmm. They're all delightful people. And uh, it's just fun. I know I have a friend who says, when are you going to retire? And I said, when they retire me. <laughs> yeah. Well, no time soon, I hope. Yeah, we don't want to see no, you go no. anywhere. We, still, we want June Foray. Yeah. That's what we want. June, what do you think um, have, has been the key to your success in having such a long career? I mean, obviously, besides your talent. I mean, you obviously have an amazing skill set. But what else do you think has contributed to it? Well, I tried to be a decent person, and uh, there's a, a Scottish poet who said, uh, would there some power, the gift to give us, to see ourselves as others see us? Mm -hmm. That's true, beautiful. Isn't that? How yeah. true is, is absolutely right. That's yeah. life, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yep. Yeah. And that's the way life should be. Yeah. My mother and father taught me to be polite and respectful and taught me to love and be honest, and mm -hmm. I am. And uh, fortunately, I don't think I have any enemies. I don't no. think you do. No. I don't think you I do. Just, I just love everybody, except people who are hateful. It's true. Like, we don't like them either. We don't like them either. <laughs> They're um, off the which list. Which is one, it's one thing yes. that I can well, say. Well, there is not one person who, uh, who has ever, your dear friend Bob Bergen, I mean, yep. you are very loved, so hopefully you feel the, the love back to you that you give out so much to people, because we, we are on board with that as well. We just think you're amazing. Absolutely. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you. June is very busy, everyone, yes. so we need to let her go. But we just, what, do you th what achievement in your life do you think that you're most proud of? I think just being respected. That, mm -hmm. That's a great achievement. So I, I appreciate what um, all these wonderful producers have given me. And uh, they just let me be you. myself mm -hmm. and what I feel I could do. Yeah. Wow. Well, you are doing it. We love you. Thank you so much Absolutely. for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us. We know our viewers are celebrating yeah. around the world and for doing rocky and bullwinkle with me yes. that was a treasure right there <laughs> that's that's it that's all he's I. he's just gonna keep replaying that part over, over and over <laughs> again over and over again june thank you for coming to vo buzz weekly sharing with us sharing with all the people out there all over the world you are such a treasure to us we love you thank you thank so you for much being here. thank you and thank all of you people for helping me do what i do Hi everybody, I'm June Foray, and guess what? I just got buzzed by Chuck and Stacy, and I love it. Hope you do too. Bye. Well, I gotta say that, man, this has been such an amazing, amazing time, especially for me because of the whole Rocky Bullwinkle thing. It's like, 
I've done everything. I could not do VO Buzz Weekly ever again, and I'll be happy. Not that that's going to happen, all right? Hey, that's the end of part two, but we're going to be back next week, I'm sure, with another awesome episode. Yes, what a privilege. What a privilege. Absolutely. Thank you again to June for being here. Yes. You guys, find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest at VO Buzz Weekly. We'll see you next week with another amazing episode. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time, time for a little, little buzz. buzz. Hey, Rocky! <laughs> Cut! <laughs>